school, the university requires a lot of resources. I am a coffee, my coffee. <laughs> my parliamentary colleagues and the organizers of today and everybody who's been invited here, good evening. I know we've stayed long and I know why we are here, but I'll be very, very brief if you allow me. Let me first of all thank Noria, Halima, Captain, and Ahmed. Ahmed, I always say, is my younger brother because he went through Starem much later. But because when we thought of holding this Harambe, Deca was still alive. And we even chose a date. And then in between, she had that terrible accident. And we had to sit down again and try and see when would be the right time. Ramathan came in, there was a period of mourning, and we chose this particular time, and we said we'd not only make it a marking point towards this Peace University, but we'll also make it as a mark of respect. And therefore, I'm very proud to be associated with you tonight. I'm very proud to be associated with the Wajir people, Northeastern people, in making this particular project a reality. We were here last year. I think Mweshimua Kanan was there. Mualimu was also there. We were in some basement room here last year, trying to raise funds for Wajir University students, just to make sure they could proceed with their education. So I'm very pleased that I'm associating yet again with Wajir, although I've also associated with the entire province, as Mweshimua Mahmoud ably put it. My own beliefs are very simple that we owe it to our own gift of life to make a difference when we are alive. And therefore, anything that will bind Kenyans together, anything that will be an initiative that will be beneficial, not just to us, but future generations, is something that we ought to support. In April, I was with uh, Mr. Farah in uh, Loyangalani, and we had gone for a peace initiative too. We had actually gone for the Trukana cultural event, which was bringing all the communities together, because we felt that what was going on in Trukana was something that we ought to have eradicated if we need to move our country forward. Indeed, Kenya has lots of potential. But what hurts me is that we lose those pot potentials on a daily basis. But if we put our head and heart together as one nation, as one community, then we can be able to articulate and move our country forward. And I keep saying, it's no longer the time for the political leadership out here to define leadership for you. You ought to define leadership to us so that you hold us accountable. Because that's the only way we can move our country forward. See the country growing together at the same time. See the country move at the same pace. It does not make sense to have one province having five universities yet another province does not have even one. It does not make sense to me. And therefore, I'll agree with my colleague from Mandera West that, yes, I know you guys have some extra little money that you had not budgeted for in your CDF in terms of areas of CDF. And if you sat together as members of parliament from Northeastern and agreed to allocate anything between three million to five million per constituency, that would be the best beginning for this Wajir Peace Initiative. And I can assure you that from the ministerial point of view, I'll be the first one to support that particular allocation <laughs> so that we can realize what our sister so much wanted to see start. The second thing, it's very good, and I know we have a new constitution and we are going to have a lot of gains in constitutional devolution that is there. But I want to appeal to my colleagues, because we sit in the same house, and we came to you, and we said this was the best constitutional document that this country required, that please, let us not appear to be selfish by passing the first amendment to change our own election date. I do not agree. 
and I've said this before, that let us not change the election date because whether we change it by two, three months, it will not make a difference. But it is important for us to honor the majority of Kenyans who voted for that document, knowing that the elections will be in August. Because that is on, the only way we can honor the majority of Kenyans who actually wanted a new constitution. And I therefore feel that as we look at the constitutional, uh, as a constitutional document and in terms of implementing, let us try as much as possible to implement it to the letter. Because that is how Kenyans will realize they actually got the right gains. Let me perhaps say this. I know that from where you come from, from that county of Wajir and from northeastern as a province, there has always been a feeling that successful governments have neglected certain areas. And I fully agree. I agree. Because I do not think the resources have been devolved to ensure the country grows together. But I'm a believer. And that's why I think my CDF has been rated highly, that you can do fewer things that have more impact than doing many things that have less impact. And because I know that our economy generates lots of money, most of which, which I consider could have been saved if it had been spent well, I think it's time as a country we decide to put what our priorities are and work on our priorities. And I can tell you from my own point of view, our priorities are not many. And if we allocated enough resources to them in the next three, four years, would have this country running. If we allocated enough resources towards security so that every Kenyan from wherever they are feels secure, we'll have more investors we'll have more Kenyans participating in the well-being of their country. If we allocated enough resources to infrastructure and we decided that we wanted to put up roads in the whole country, not in one particular part of the country, would have opened up our country. If we put enough resources to harness water, because our population is growing at 1.2 million a year and soon we run out of food. So if we put enough resources on water sector to ensure we harness all the water that we get, we'll have ensured our food security is in place. If we concentrated on replicating buildings like Inyata National Hospital in every county and putting them with the right equipment and staff and drugs, we'll have sorted out the healthcare situation in our country. And the fifth one is to ensure that all elements of education are replicated in every county in our republic. Those five, if we put enough resources in, in them for three years, would have pushed our country forward. And I think that is how Kenya ought to move forward. From where I sit from a planning point, it is possible. I just think it requires the right political goodwill to make our country move forward. Let me conclude by saying this. Most of the greatest cities and towns in the world have been built by universities. If you go to Stanford in California, Stanford Town is as a result of Stanford University. If you go to Oxford Town, it's as a result of the campus that is there. You go to Cambridge, it's the same thing. If you go to Kakamega, the whole economy of Kakamega, 90% depends on Masinde Muliro University. I want you to imagine what Wajir Peace University would mean to the economy of Wajir. What it would mean in terms of opportunities, in terms of opening. When architect uh, Mawia was presenting and I was looking at the cow shed and looking at the livestock industry, the potential of having a landed community dealing with livestock the value addition of that livestock, instead of having to bring the cows to the river here and you do value addition and you have an international airport in Wajir, it just explains, 
It just explains the potential that lies there, which is unexploited. I want to tell you as fellow Kenyans, as my brothers and sisters, that we will only grow our country if we exploit the potential that exists. And it is in that course that as I honor DECA, as I feel for Wajir Peace University, I feel we are opening up a part of Kenya that ought to have been opened 40, 50 years ago. <laughs> With those few remarks, I would like now to change to what brought us here so that we can conclude. I know you've waited pretty long, but I think for DECA we could afford to wait even longer. I want to thank the Father State. They've been very patient. I know they've been chasing us. They want to go and run their stories. But I want to thank you for the patience. But we are doing this for a very special lady. I really wish we had done this Harambe when she was alive. Then you'd have realized how special she was. Thank you. And I think to start the Harambe, let me announce the 200,000 that have been given so that I am told how we need to proceed. Mika Cheseren, who is an immediate governor of Central Bank and who is now the chairman of a commission for allocating resources and whose vice chair lady is a member of this organization. This in 15 minutes time. Had DECA been alive, it could have been done in five minutes. Because you'd have just stood here and you'd have all come here. <laughs> I know her style. Brilliant, Mwishinu. Well, we've been told, uh, as you saw from the Speak and Span Architecture by Maria, everything is planned. We are starting with the University Trust. And therefore, the University Trust take the center stage. It's your big day in terms of, you'll tell us what you are. The chair lady. Yeah, thank you. Yes. On behalf of the, the board of the University Trust, the family and the friends, we present a check of one million. Wonderful. One million is no small change.